I will give her vineyards there, and the valley of suffering for a door of hope, and she shall sing there as in the days of her youth. Rhonda Lazert Ministries welcomes you to the Door of Hope. Welcome to Door of Hope. It's a pleasure to be with you. As I've looked at the subject of the language of the Spirit and gone through really largely first and second Peter, uh, knowing that we can't be playing games with God, uh, that he looks upon the heart, we serve God from our heart, and we have to have faith to proceed forward, and so we begin that journey. Uh, I've talked about he that has shall have more, and he shall have an abundance, the growth that comes with spirit, spiritual life. And last week, seeing the words that by his stripes we are made whole, not seeing it as a single incident, but rather as a, like a blanket that covers us, a security blanket, that by his stripes we are made whole. And then moving on to uh, the heroes of faith, chapter 12, and there's a list, Enoch, and they all go down. But, you know, even going back to Moses, Abraham, uh, that portion in Exodus of Moses, realizing that spiritual life, you know, if, if you're uh, confused, uh, what helps is realizing it is from the top down. Sometimes we are journeying and we think it's all about us and all about our own efforts. And, uh, you know, we get bogged down in, in the details, but the truth is it moves from the top down. Uh, it's God's, it's his story. It's God's plan of redemption. Uh, and yes, we're important, but God is still running things. And so much of our theology uh, has put us in charge too much. We're obedient to the things that are placed in our lives that are before us. We can only do what we can do. And it is God who moves by his Holy Spirit upon this earth. And when I look at Exodus, chapter 3 in Moses' account. It says, Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led his flock beside the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And there the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush, and he looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burning up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, saying, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no longer, no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. So there it is. You know, there's, it's not that the scriptures contradict uh, the verses each other, but there is an enlargement of Holy Scripture. Uh, you read Paul's first letters, and there is even growth in his uh, subjects to us. There's just a growth. So you have Moses in the desert, and God uses this man to liberate Israel to free him, and he, it, it starts by the bush burning, and he goes over to say it. Uh, for my own uh, calling, uh, when I was asked whether I uh, would do Door Hope on Vision, which was starting some 27 years ago now, uh, my prayer was, Lord, is that your will for my life? It, you know, at the time it might have seemed like it wasn't an act of faith to accept, but I've realized that the things that succeed in our lives when God is in charge. And we're just instruments uh, to do His will. And it's not wrong in our faith to walk cautiously, to be careful. Uh, we have reviewed it's our conduct that we should be careful about in the sense of sin, the deceitfulness of sin, but in which path we choose, uh, discernment uh, for what we uh, labor for, put our hand to, uh, we need to be led of God. My sheep hear my voice and will not follow another. I've called it the forgotten promise 
for the church, that God promises to speak to us, to lead and direct our lives. It's not the other way. It's not from the bottom up. It is top down. And to get that and see that takes a lot of the stress away. Uh, because, you know, my husband says, if the phone doesn't, if it isn't ringing, don't answer it. Uh, and we have to be careful that we're not there uh, in the church pushing, trying to make things happen that in no way will happen uh, because it is not God's plan and it's not his purpose for our lives. And it says that it's not in man to direct his own steps. And sometimes we're missing the obvious because we are uh, off in some sort of disconnected la-la land uh, to do something that God has not called us to do for somehow we uh, had a turn in the road. It reminds us that the heart is desperately wicked who can know it. So here's Moses, the bush is burning and God calls Moses to free his people. And every response for Moses is not exactly gung-ho. He, you know, he said, I'm a man of stammering lips. So, you know, he makes it, he says, you know, how can I do that? I like Mary uh, when she's told the mother of Jesus, uh, the mother of the Messiah, when she's told she's going to have the Christ child, she says, how can this be? I know not a man. And it was explained that the power of the most holy God shall come upon her. And uh, the, it will be you know, a product of the Holy Spirit, the dunamis of God, the energy of God, where the Christ would be formed in her womb. And uh, it would have no father, but certainly Mary facilitated as that instrument for the birth of the Messiah. And we have all through Holy Scripture, I like the Apostle Paul's road to Damascus. And uh, he, is hit to the ground, it said, well, Saul in chapter nine, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogue at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might uh, bring them to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approached Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, who are you, Lord? And the reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. So there's another account of how does the Apostle Paul get his start? He's knocked to the ground. Uh, God speaks to him from the heavenlies, like supernatural experiences that are real, uh, that because of their outcome, you know, it wasn't wishful thinking. It wasn't fanaticism. It wasn't crazy. It speaks to him. And as we read down, he, he mentions to the Lord, you know, it, there's a laying on of hands with Ananias, and there is go for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before the Gentiles and kings before the people of Israel. I know from my own life when I began the program uh, after my healing I read Isaiah 54 and when the account uh, words were on the passage of uh, breaking forth I felt the same spirit of God directing me and I was astound, astounded because as I read down it spoke of uh, a widow, a reproach, uh, children and yet God was going to use that person as an instrument and I uh, looked at that and you know firstly you feel a presence when God manifests himself to you and asks you to do something you're going to feel something you're going to you know, it's going to be different. Paul's knocked to the ground. Moses has a burning bush. There's no Mary, you know, says, how can this be? Uh, Elizabeth, Zechariah, all through the scriptures. Uh, and you feel something. You feel it. And you get direction. And it said that, you know, those are very words, just to be an instrument. We're really nothing. We're, we're um, an instrument in the hands of the potter. And our job as the church, our job as, as people, is to hear God's voice and do that. 
Nothing more, nothing less. I like the Song of Solomon. It, just before the maiden starts leaping on the mountaintop, it says, my companions are desiring to hear your voice. Let me hear it. So if we want to do uh, something for God, God is going to speak to us. And I remember in the early stages of hearing that prophetic word. And you have to be careful with those, but it exists. Uh, you know, uh, the, even the donkey in the Old Testament, it spoke, how can I curse that whom God has blessed? God's still speaking to this planet. He still speaks to our hearts. He even speaks audibly sometimes. Sometimes he speaks to us through a sta stranger that says, you know, maybe I shouldn't say this, but. So are we open to the things of the Spirit from the top down, or are we so busy trying to make it happen, trying to push the rope, which never, never works? And I found that in my life, when, when it moves from the top down, I have that full assurance of faith that that other dimension, the language of the Spirit, seek ye first the kingdom of God, it's first, uh, I pray your spirit, soul, and body, again, spirit first, that it moves in my life, it moves in your life, and you hear his direction, you hear his instruction, even good things sometimes, trials that are coming, we're forewarned and we sweep them away and then find out we should have paid attention uh, to that. I remember a man who was hit at a railway crossing uh, and where I live, and his testimony is before it happened, he, he had a, you know, he heard something, and sure enough, he did, we don't pay attention to that still, small voice. Moses is a little more dramatic. Paul is a little more dramatic than most of us, but still, God is speaking to uh, the minds and hearts of this world, to Christian folk. Paul, at that point wasn't even a, a believer in Messiah, but he speaks to our hearts. He speaks from the top down. It is not in man to direct his own path. And if you want to be successful at something, get hold of God so that he can speak to your heart and you can hear his voice and be directed by him, by his grace and mercy, that you might know him and hear him and be led of him. And instead of, you know, I, I then, when, when he speaks from the top down, to have that assurance of faith, uh, to know then you can say what will be will be, uh, but certainly not as a carte blanche a statement where we can use that as an excuse to sit and do nothing uh, for the kingdom of God or for any other part of our lives that I call it the giant dump truck in the sky theory that you, the heavenly chute opens and it pours on you and what will be will be. Uh, it doesn't work that way. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little, here a little, there a little. And there are scriptures where it says after uh, much endurance, after much tribulation, you enter the kingdom of God. So top down, it works. And not wrong to pray, Lord, speak to my heart speak to my spirit, speak to me to guide me in the path that you wish me to go and give me ears that I might hear, a spirit that might be open to your cry and your plan and your purpose. And firstly, to begin by reading yourself of the things that have separated you from your God. You know, it's, we fill our lives full of a lot of things that really don't matter. We take our anxieties and won't let go of them, thinking God is going to hold certain things against us. And we have from Peter, who was an example of failure, denying the Lord and all of that. And yet he says, cast all your anxieties upon God, for he careth for you. So the language of the Spirit, the Spirit of God in your life, works from the top down, as it did with the Apostle Paul, and as I read those words, it said, Go, for he is an instrument who I have chosen to bring my name before the Gentiles. And then there was the laying on of hands, and then the church of Jesus Christ realizing that God had placed his anointing upon Paul or Saul, Saul, and that he was an instrument for the church to grow, to explain uh, 
the atonement, to explain the Messiah, to explain how it was the fulfillment of the law. And it works, and uh, Paul's letters are extremely interesting. And they're just filled with so much instruction uh, individually for the Church of Jesus Christ, and we benefit a great deal by paying attention to them. So in the book of Hebrews, we move on to um, the 10th chapter in Romans and then in Hebrews. But Romans says, Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for you is that they may be saved. I can testify that they have a zeal for God, but it is not enlightened for being ignorant of the righteousness that comes from God and seeking to establish their own. They have not submitted to God's righteousness, for Christ is the end of the law, so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. And he mentions Moses then, and the word of God being near us, and uh, directing our lives, and as we read in this passage, again, that recipe from the top do down, that God is there speaking to us, directing our lives, in a very, very personal way by his grace and mercy, uh, that we might know him. Firstly, we, uh, my sheep, hear my voice, and that we might move forward and follow through uh, what God has called each and every one of us to do, and not have our own agendas, because they're not that good anyway, uh, and remove the, uh, the debris from our lives, and that singleness of mind that the scripture speaks of, it says, if your eye is single, your whole body shall be full of light. So that journey to singleness of mind where you realize it's top down, we're saying, yes, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief, and ending up in the book of Hebrews that says, therefore, my friends, Hebrews uh, chapter 10, we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And that's where we're at, uh, dear ones, that as God's intention for our lives is revealed, as we enter in with praise and thanksgiving. I, I just love the way it, it, you know, it's just without wavering, for he is faithful, for who has promised is faithful, for he who has promised is faithful the yes and amen of our lives by his grace and mercy, the yes and amen. Isn't that beautiful? Like where else can you get a guarantee of success um, in this world? Where else can you know that you know that you know? There's so many uncertainties, and yet as we are certain and plug in by his grace and mercy to life in the spirit, understanding the language of the Spirit, the new life of the Spirit. It's been laid out for us, and we haven't been taught much of it, and we're not so sure sometimes, but we grow in His grace, and we grow in His knowledge, and God is always directing our lives. He is the guardian, the good shepherd, the keeper of our souls. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And if you're, you're feeling up against it, uh, you know, the... The purpose of retreats used to be to get away with God. The purpose of disciplining your lives, uh, the purpose of uh, spending extra time in prayer, the purpose of, uh, you know, just saying, well, I'm going to read uh, Paul's letters again and again for a while. All of that, all of that is, uh, I call it spiritual drain -all. It clears the line because God is, is wanting to use us. God is wanting... Uh, to bless us. God is wanting to fulfill us. He said, I've come to give you life and life abundantly. That's what I desire for you, is life and an abundant of life. So as we learn to steal away from the maddening crowd and to, 
how then should we live uh, to walk differently? Uh, you're, if you're not plugged in that way anyway, you know, I'm sorry to say, I, I'm not so sure the other's going to work anyway. Uh, uh, what chance do we have in the complexities of life? Uh, the financial demands, the health demands, our demands of relationships, our obligations. Uh, we're, pretty, we're pretty stressed. Uh, we're pretty tied in. Uh, we have, there's no slack around that I've noticed. And yet with the Spirit of God, God providing, God speaking, God making a way for us, is the way that we can succeed in this journey, that we're here for a very, very short time. My sheep hear my voice and will not follow another. Lord, I, I'm just so thankful that you love us so personally that we can't get lost in the crowd, that your salvation has come uh, to each and every person who calls upon you, that you have opened the new and living way, the new life of the Spirit, where the veil in the temple was torn from the top to the bottom. And I know, Lord, as astounding as it seems to us that you love us individually, you love us personally, that you care for us, uh, you're our elder brother, God is our Father, Abba Father, and you have a plan and purpose for every person, and your thoughts towards us are good and not evil and you are waiting on us to come boldly before you, to understand that you are a God who cares, a God who leads and directs our lives in a very personal manner, and that it is because of your stripes we are made whole. Hallelujah. So help us to move forward, pressing towards the mark of the prize of the upward call in Christ Jesus, that we might know you in the power of his your resurrection and the fellowship of your suffering and why. Why do we lay hold of you, almighty God? Because you have first laid hold of us. Amen and amen. How a Savior came from glory How we made the lame to walk again And caused the blind to see I heard about His groaning Of His precious blood's atoning Then I repented of my sins And won the victory Oh, victory in Jesus My Savior forever well, he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me into a victory beneath the cleansing blood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing. How he made the lame to walk again It caused the blind to see and Then I cried, dear Jesus Come and heal my broken spirit and Somehow Jesus came and brought To me the victory Oh, a victory in Jesus My Savior forever Well, he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me into a victory beneath the cleansing blood. I heard about a mansion is built for me in glory, and I heard about the streets of gold. Beyond the crystal sea About the angels singing And the old redemption story and Some sweet day I'll sing up there The song of victory Oh, a victory in Jesus My Savior forever Well, he sought me and he bought me 
his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me into a victory beneath the cleansing blood. Oh, oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. Well, he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to do a victory beneath the cleansing blood. It's always good to be with you uh, during the telecasts, and I do say that I'm available to come and speak to your group. I believe in prayer and in teaching the Word of God and that joy as believers get together uh, to share what we really have in Christ. So I am available for that, and of course you can contact by the prayer line phone number and the email address rlm at kojiko.ca. CA or you just Google Door of Hope and we come up. So, you know, our intention is to grow in His grace. The people that know Him do great exploits and yet to understand that it comes from the top down and that certainly lightens the load. So God bless you. Help us remain on air. I ask for your support uh, to keep paying the bills and I am so thankful for to so many of you for your gracious help through the many, many years. God bless you, and take care, and have a great week. It is your financial gifts that allow Rhonda Lazert to remain on the air. All gifts payable to Rhonda Lazert Ministries are tax deductible. 